No, I thought we had a good one today. We got a little bit forced inside. It wasn't nice outside, but we had wet grass, wet fields. So we practiced about half in, half out. And the guys are fired up. They're definitely a little more pep in their step when you're playing Auburn and the uh, pads are popping. So it's good. Got to carry that into tomorrow. Noticed uh, Jake out there that had the wrap on his leg. He's limping around a little bit. Didn't know if that was just you know how how major or minor that was. Wanted to check I, on it. I think he got a bruise or something. He got a hit on those uh, on those plays late in the half, maybe. Um, but he's, he's fine. I mean, he's running. He took all his reps. He's got a wrap on it. Have a Lamont and K Mays been doing? Uh, they're both limited. Did a little bit of stuff today. Couldn't do everything. Did some of it. So we, they're day to day. How close is Devon Wilson? I know we've talked to him before in the past couple. Years. You get a little bit closer, maybe you considering getting in a game here late in the year. He, he, he moved to start practicing more with us, not with the scouts. But that that just means he's cleared to play. I mean, he's going to play. Right. He got a lot to learn. I mean, he's he's smart. He's bright. He's a good football player. But you, it's not that easy. You don't just take. Mm -hmm however long that's been for him um, off. So we're trying to kind of develop him and get him in a position that he could play. So he's repping at star. He's, uh, he's working with the twos. He's taking a lot of reps. And the sooner he learns it and he's able to play, then hopefully he'll get in that competition and mix it up. Did, uh, is Coach, is Demetrius Robertson still on the radar? I noticed he didn't travel the last two games. What's his Yeah, thing? he's had an injury he's been dealing with, and um, he's still injured right now. I don't know if he'll be clear for this game yet or not. What type of conditioning goes into preventing these guys from getting injuries? All season strength and conditioning program, Scott and his staff do a ton of nutrition, uh, everything you can think of. We try to put it together to try to keep them from getting injured. Obviously, it's a contact sport. There's going to be injuries with it, but uh, we do a lot of stretch and stride. Um, they get a lot of recovery on Thursdays. Um, we do everything we possibly can to try to take care of them. Soft tissue injuries, meaning pulls, we've been really fortunate with those, and uh, we do a good job of not giving guys too many yards. Unfortunately, it seems like we've had a lot of shoulders, knees, ankles, those things that are, are just football injuries. Looking at the game, obviously, um with Auburn's front seven, the defensive line, we've got a lot of seniors on that front. You know, where do you see those challenges might present? Um, you know, with your front five when it begins that front seven. Yeah, they're big. They're physical. They're quick. They're athletic. A lot of them will be high draft picks. We've we've been against them before. You know, it's uh, it seems like they've been there forever. Um, but they're talented and they do a good job up front. I think. Biggest thing is being consistent. You know, you got to keep chopping wood. You can't expect to get a lot of. You know, you aren't going to get a lot of movement early on those guys. They're they're heavy and they strike. We're going to strike. Two guys striking each other and uh, two stubborn teams. You know, they won't stop the run. They won't be able to run the ball. And see how it goes. Coach, here's some reports out there that um, Mel is uh, interested in the Maryland jar. They're interested in him. Those things usually don't come up until after the season, but like, how do you deal with that, you know, right here in the regular season, if at all? I don't. I mean, you don't deal with it. I mean, Mel's one of the most professional people I've ever met. He's he's worried about these guys and his team. He's worried about coaching his tail off for them, leading the defensive unit, making calls. I've been there, done that. I know what that's like to have your name mentioned in a lot of jobs. And uh, I know that Mel's focus is on getting our guys ready to play. Um, coach, uh, how does this weekend, with it being uh, the last, home, one of the bigger rivalry games at home at night? I mean, how does this serve as a, a, a big recruiting weekend? Well, we're going to have a lot of prospects here. Um, we, we always have a lot of prospects here, but I think this one seems like we've gone forever without a home game, so it's kind of. Like everybody's ready to come back, and the fact we got a night game probably makes it where more people can make the travel. Um, but it'll it'll help us with that night. It'll help us win a big game. Help us the fact that we haven't had a home game in a while, so we're expecting uh, a lot of prospects and uh, it's a chance to showcase our new facility again and um, show them a good time. How how much does that 
I mean, I know it's just one weekend, but how much does losing one recruiting weekend impact a recruiting class? I mean, how valuable are all those weekends to you? I don't know what you mean, losing a weekend. Well, you the Jackson, I, I guess because this would have been your designated home game with Jacksonville, right? You guys were the designated oh, home Oh, you're talking team. about the neutral side. If that costs you a recruiting weekend, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, right? Yeah, it absolutely costs you a recruiting weekend. It's, 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 you don't get to have anybody. They don't get to have anybody. So our version of our LSU-Alabama game is held in Jacksonville, and we don't have prospects. So that's not, it's not conducive for recruiting. Absolutely, it's not. It's just the, the way it's been done here before. So, I mean, it's a... It's not great for recruiting because you lose a home game every other year, and that just comes with it. But it certainly helps to have more home games. Kirby, you've uh, seen a lot of good running backs in your time as a, as a coach. Did when you ever you ever see Swift make a move and go whoa, or you know, see something that? Yeah, I mean that, the, the two the two moves he made on the same play last week were pretty incredible. I mean that was explosive cuts, you know, going one way really fast and being a one cut runner to be able to plant and go the other way. That was a was definitely a wow run, which he's had quite a bit of those since he's been here. He puts them together back to back. He's really, really explosive and fast. And when you look for one cut short quickness, he certainly finds that. After the game Saturday night <coughs> and Ledbetter both talked about the naysayers, doubters for D line and front seven. I think uh, Ledbetter said yesterday that sometimes coaches will come in here and say, these guys are saying stuff about you. How much is that sort of external talk serve as, as motivation? I don't really think it's – I mean, I think the players get into it. I think they like to look at it. They like to see it, and they use it as motivation. I think strength coaches sometimes use it as motivation. But I'm a big intrinsic motivation person. I think you've got to do it from within. you got to do it because it's the right thing to do. you got to do it because – you want to do it for your teammates. Because what happens when you play good and they don't say that and you like have no motivation? You're always looking for the naysayers. I just – I don't think that's big. I mean, <coughs> obviously, if those kids said that, they may think, they may think it's important to them. And um, I think we had a great challenge last week, but we issued a challenge to them because the challenge was, here's a team who's running the ball really well. Here's a running back who's running the ball really well. You have an opportunity to go out and make a name or make a mark for yourself. But – I don't think it's really about what other people say. On the edge, um, uh, what, how do you see in the rotation between uh, Brett and Cox and Robert Beal? What kind of goes into who plays where, whether it be just when the opportunity comes when DeAndre Walker's played up? DeAndre gets gassed, and we try to roll those guys in. It's really been a matter of who practiced better. You know, Beal had the one uh, family deal. He had to go to a funeral. He was playing really good. Uh, he was playing a little more in the LSU game, and then he misses the uh, Florida game. And then, you know, he just really has had a competition. It's like who, who's practicing better, who does better. And each week, whichever guy plays better is kind of DeAndre's backup. And a lot of games they both play, but we're always going to do it based on how they practice during the week and make it really competitive. They both tend to work hard when it comes to wanting to play. Coach, of fans are – kind of feel obligated to ask what fans want to know. And the black jersey thing has been speculated on, talked about, tweeted about all that stuff. Is there – where, where, what is your stance on black jersey? I, I wasn't here when you did it a couple years ago. Yeah, we did it a couple years ago against uh, somebody. I think it was one of the – to buy teams or something. And, and really, for energy and enthusiasm, I don't, I don't think you need energy and enthusiasm for Auburn. If we can't get up for Auburn, then we've got some other problems. And we've got to be excited <laughs> to play. And I just – don't think that's that's not relevant to me. It's not. I'm not saying that we're not ever going to do it. I'm not saying that we are. That's just not really what's important to me. It's just just me. I, I believe in the guys going out and playing physical, playing hard, and you don't have to do things like that to get them fired up to do it. I really think they should want to do it. Just a project. It's great, for, it's great for recruiting. So I was going to ask you, does surprise you how much fans make a big deal about that kind of thing, though, instead of what you're talking no, about? No, it doesn't surprise me. Anything fans do. <laughs> so to be clear, traditional home red. I, I guess, yeah. I mean, Whatever John means. No, I'm not really concerned with that. I'll let you guys <laughs> get the hits and the likes on that. I just want to get a team ready to play. You've touched on the uh, talent and the depth that you all have a wide receiver. But in this first year, what has a guy like Cortez Hankton done to get the most? Yeah. He's done a really good job. I think he's got command of that room. I think the kids respect him. He works tremendously hard. He's brought really good ideas scheme-wise to our offense. And he's got a room that uh, – He's done a really good job with me. You think about it, 
keeping those guys happy is not the easiest job. And, you know, he, he's a journeyman NFL player who played on special teams, was a third, fourth, fifth wide out for teams. And that's what a lot of times you have in your room. That's what those guys want to be. And they see him and they aspire to do what he did and they listen to his message. And uh, he does a good job selling team concept. Kind of in the football coach. Go ahead. Kind of in the same vein, um, Brandon asked earlier about the rotation at outside linebacker. Uh, kind of same question with Dan Lane. You know, what has he done to kind of get the most out of those players? In the same? I think Dan's been great for our team. He brings ideas, fresh ideas. He's been around a lot of different defensive coaches. He's got ideas in the room that are outside of our box, or our little kind of group that's been around together. He's also got great energy. I think he does a great job in his presentations to our defense. Uh, he gave one last week that was epic on behalf of Benny Snell in Kentucky. And he does a tremendous job. And he, 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 he's really helped DeAndre Walker become a better player. Two more questions? Uh, with Mikhail back, or my, I don't know, Michael, Mikhail, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. What, what does that do as far as you know, you guys with the depth? I mean, you're still having to try some other guys and, and make sure you have depth there, or does that kind of short, short things up for you? It helps. I mean, he's a 275, 280 guy. We need, we need more 300 pounders, but uh, he's, it helps having depth. I mean, he hasn't been there for, I don't know, a couple weeks, maybe one week two weeks and it's good to have him back because we, we feel like we've been short there bringing him back you know we don't want to rep Trey Hill over there I mean we, we still got Matori working there and all the other guys but we're healthier now than we've been over the last two weeks Wyatt Marshall any thoughts Wyatt and Wyatt Marshall is back. Wyatt's back Wyatt, Wyatt played last week and played a bunch Davis is not back yet it's Notori uh is it permanent? I don't know if it's permanent. Well, it's, it's permanent it's anywhere practice. close to being able to play, to get out there. Uh, I mean, he knows the calls. He could go out there and function, but is he ready for that? I mean, you're talking about a guy that for, he played a little bit of in high school. We hadn't done a lot since. He's close, but it's not like can he line up and know what to do. It's is he good enough? Is he better than a guy that can play in front of him right now? And I think that's the deal. He's in a, he's in a thick competition, but he's closer to playing there right now than he was at O-line. So. Thanks.